Welcome to Life of the Party! Thank you everyone for coming tonight on this slightly slushy evening. It's great to have you here. And it's also great to have my guest here tonight. He is famous in town and around the country and perhaps around the world for his wonderful chocolates, cakes and fudges. And tonight he's going to teach us how to make truffles at home and how to temper chocolate so that you have beautiful, gorgeous, shiny strawberries for your loved one. We're prepping you a little bit for Valentine's Day today. We're giving you time to learn some things and treat your sweeties. So Ron, why don't you come on up here right. and we'll get started. Yeah. Ron Mancini, owner of Mother Myrick's Confectionery. Have a seat. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming. Ron's been a guest on the show, probably for 80% of the shows that I've done. Yeah, we, we enjoy and them. finally, I'm getting him as a guest. <laughs> I'm, I love chocolate, so it's maybe a personal thing for me to have you here. But we've known each other a long time, and we've been involved in a lot of different things we together. We have. We have. So. It's been great. Actually, yeah. from the very first day you worked for us. Yeah, and that was probably in 1982. A mere child. Yeah, <laughs> I was, if you I think know. about it. <laughs> Don't tell this, the state of Vermont. Or the, <laughs> <laughs> did get a paycheck. And it was during, I was right after school. Yep. I packed, uh, I packed butter crunch and shrink wrap, and I trimmed the edges of the skis and the ski boots and packed them in grass and put the little gold bands on them and oh, the yeah. stickers. It was so much fun. And we're still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just grateful later. I'm not still doing yeah, it. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, you went on to bigger and better things, and it's been yeah. a joy to watch that. But I might come back, you know? Well, okay. Why not? There's always Full a space. circle. Yeah. So I worked for you in 1982. When did Mother Myrick start, and how did it start? Well, it started out as a pop-up fudge stand in 1977 in the window of the country store across from... Uh, Berkshire Bank um, and uh, in, on Main Street, and it was it was that's exactly what it was a pop up fudge stand. I was I was fortunate enough to learn how to make fudge from some wonderful a wonderful candy maker in Lowell, Massachusetts. George became my mentor and taught me the fundamentals of candy making, and that's how it all started. Well, what what made you decide to make fudge before anything else? Well, it was um, actually I. The goal was to have a, a short-term business, not a long-term business. And the goal was really never to make fudge. It was actually to sell Vermont-made fudge made by local homemakers. I thought that was a good shtick at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but the location of being in the window of the country store changed that dynamic. And it was said, well, I just can't stand there in the window of the store doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So why don't I just learn how to make fudge? Well, that was a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> because learning how to make fudge from a book just really wasn't working. Mm. Especially being able to go from a home recipe right. and without any candy making experience at all and then trying to do something on a commercial basis. But um, a random visit uh, to Boston looking for candy suppliers uh, put me in touch. I met George and uh, George had a, a restaurant and a and a candy shop in downtown Lowell, and in the window of his store was this big sign, homemade fudge. And it was across from a phone booth that I was looking to make a call at. So I walked in and introduced myself and uh, told George that I was interested in finding out how to make fudge. And after a lengthy conversation, uh, he invited me into his kitchen, and uh, he became my mentor. How neat. And and Six I, weeks I later, remember, there I was. I remember you in the window. In the window. And the kids would clamor around you and just watch what you were doing. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Free samples didn't hurt business at all. Right, right, right. <laughs> Kept us all going. Between the Pellegrini's penny candy yep. and, and our your little fudge, fudge stand. And the soda machine where you pull the bottle out. Right. That was the best place. All of that. Yeah. It was you, a lot of it was a lot of a fun. dollar and a dream for every kid. It was. It was and great. <laughs> and you know, we also that's when I started to hand dip chocolates, simple things, mm -hmm. you know, fruit clusters, dipped apricots, things of that nature. Uh, George taught me how to temper by hand on a marble slab. So I did that in the window as well. Uh, this was before I had any equipment at all. And, uh, and it just kind of grew from there. And that's actually how uh, we ended up, Jackie and I, in the ice cream 
business mm -hmm. because one of the customers uh, was a second homeowner from Ithaca, New York, whose family owned an ice cream company, Purity Ice Cream Company. The best ice cream ever. That was ever. awesome. And um, they, um, they asked me about whether I would make some chocolates for them to sell in their store in Ithaca over the winter because the ice cream business was slower back right. then. So I did that, and they'd come up on weekends and bring 10, 12 pounds of candies back with them. And over the course of the conversations that I had with them, uh, Anne had remembered the little Equinox uh, had an ice cream parlor in it for yeah, the I summers. I remember that, too. And she fantasized about her ice cream being sold there um, someday. And the following year, my circumstances were such that I called them up and said, if you'll lend me the money, we'll build an ice cream parlor and sell your ice cream. And that's exactly what they did. And uh, that was for 27 years. Wow. And it was such a quintessential ice cream parlor, too. It I was loved great. it with the, the brass handles and the marble counters and the little scrolled chairs. And that ice cream, I'm sure most of you sitting here remember the bittersweet ice cream, the Irish coffee ice cream. The, what was the name of that Sunday that you made with the malt and the fudge? Oh, the Dusty the, Road and the oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mud Season Special. Yeah, the, the Mud, mud season, season Special. Oh, my God, it was so good. <laughs> well, we need that back. <laughs> well, I'm happy to mentor someone. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Whoever wants to step up and do that. Well, we have 21 very interested people here tonight, yeah. and God knows who's watching out there. Right. So. And it was a good run. I mean, yeah. 27 years. Uh, to have that as part of our business. And, and I think we in Manchester were so lucky to have that in our town. It was really kind of a, well, everyone you know who grew up here worked for Ron and Jackie at some point, <laughs> honestly. I wish I could ask all of you to raise your hands, but the demographic is not. No. What, that, <laughs> but if you're at home watching and you work for Ron and Jackie, yeah, right. raise Go your hand it. and say, "Woo, I'm a hard worker because." <laughs> well, we we taught fundamentals. Yeah. You know, and uh, fundamentals of customer service, food service, uh, uh, and it was just a fun thing. And it was great because uh, we had so many students from Burn Burton mm -hmm. that worked for us. In fact, the first five years of the ice cream parlor, we had the same crew for five full years. They would just come back every summer, put an apron on, go right to work. They were the um, girls basketball team. Wow. Uh, yep. So we had some, and we're still in Strong touch with girls. many of them. Strong, tall, scoop. you know, <laughs> wonderful women who went on to do great things in their lives. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was really a privilege to have that experience for us. Yeah. And we're in touch. Mm -hmm. We get cards. We're, we're, we're in touch on Facebook. And, and it's such a fun thing. We made wedding cakes for oh, them, yeah. and, uh, and now we're seeing second and third generations coming in, especially with Jackie's reading program. Right. That yeah. started in 1989 and still consists, continues today. And now we're getting, you know, families bringing, who did the reading program back then, bringing their kids in for it. That's so, so much it's fun. it's pretty special. That's great. Well, it's, the proof is in the pudding. The, the chocolate is amazing. The service is great. The store is so cute. You two are both amazing, giving, warm people. Well, thank um, you. You're welcome. So I want to learn how to make truffles at home, and I want people to learn how to temper chocolate because I learned just before we came on here, and it's a process, but worth it, worth the time. So let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, All right. great. Let's get an apron on. It's time to make some chocolate. You got it, girl. Mm. All right, Ron, show me all your secrets. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to show you some of them. And right. actually, uh, secrets that can be used at home. You know, it's one thing to, with equipment and things of that nature, like a professional chef that you are, you know, it's easy to get lost in the technicalities of things. But most of the things that we make can be made at home, whether it's our peanut brittle or a toffee, like our butter crunch. A lot of these recipes were inspired by home cooks, like, you know, and Betty Crocker yeah. cookbooks and things of that nature, and just expanded it commercially. So we're going to make, because it is on the eve of Valentine's, uh, that we are going to make a Grand Marnier truffle, which would be a very romantic piece. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, the big favorite at Valentine now is chocolate-dipped strawberries. So those are two items that are easy to do at home, and we'll have a lot of fun showing yeah. how to use 
home tools to make these and have them just taste just as good as the fanciest candy shop in town or in the country. Or almost as good. Or almost as good. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, a truffle is a ganache. And ganache is really a combination of uh, chocolate and a butterfat. That butterfat could be from cream. It could be from butter, oh, that's not primarily. Okay. Yeah, that works. There we go. All right. So we're gonna, you're not going to leave it on, though, right? Or you just oh, you want to put the cream in and get going? I do, but I just wanted to right. explain a little bit about um, about the process. So it's um, so making the truffles is um, is the, the percentage. So we're doing a uh, five parts, four parts solid, chocolate, chocolate, sugar, okay. right, and and butter fat. There's in the heavy cream. There's thirty six percent fat, so that would be one of the solids. Huh. Yes. Okay. And the other part is is the one part is liquid. So we're going to make what I consider a um, handheld um, truffle, one that will not dissolve or or goop over your hand. So, but if somebody wanted to make a soft ganache, right, they would just increase the ratio of liquid to solids. So, um, and when I talk about the solids and butter fat, so like butter is 92% solid and 8% water. Heavy cream is 36% butter fat and the rest is water or mm -hmm. liquid. So when we're doing our formulations, we're going to take that 36% into account as part of the solid. Okay. All right? You got that? So, that's, <laughs> so that would be the basis for it, you know? Okay. And because out here on the finished product, we have these what I call handheld truffles. They're not going to collapse on you. Mm -hmm. And yet over here, we have our opera cake. And the opera cake has a ganache that more, has more moisture, more liquid in it, so it has a greater easier mouthfeel, it's more complementary to the almond flour layer, cake layer mm. that, it, that exists. So we're going to start making, the, all right, and we're going to start with heavy cream, and we're going to, this, and we do everything by weight. So this is 0.45 pounds of heavy cream. Okay. All right? And then 0.10 pounds of sugar. So we're going to start scalding that. Am I doing the wrong one again? There we go. All right, so we're going to stir the sugar in. Ron is a lefty. Creative. Thank you. You're welcome. So at, at our candy kitchen, um, we use induction cooktops because the beauty of induction is that it doesn't generate random heat. Um, so it's all magnetic. There's no heat source. And it's really great. Now while the, while the cream and sugar are, are, are I'll keep my eye boiling, on thank you, we're going to take one and a half pounds of chocolate. And you know, you could go to the supermarket and buy chocolate bars. Like this is a this camera right here. Yeah, Champlain, this is a 54%. We're using a 58%. So you can buy a pound or a pound and a half. We were using a pound and a half of chocolate um, and break the bars up. It gets a little costly um, to do that because that comes out to about 20 plus dollars a pound. Or uh, we have customers that come in and ask us for our chocolate in this state, which is a Calais, mm -hmm. all right, or a chocolate drop. We used to get the chocolate in 11 pound slabs. Okay, from the Calibo Chocolate Company, it's uh, from Belgium. And this is how we used to get it, and you could peel it away, and then we would have to take a hammer and break it all up to, to melt it. I used it. to do the same exact thing at yep. the restaurant. Then I found the Calais, and I said, screw that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, the, and the big and problem so for times. us is we have uh, two chocolate melters. Each one holds 125 pounds of melted chocolate. So that's a lot of breaking up with a hammer. So yeah. now we get the Calais in 50-pound cases, and we're able to pour the, uh, the chocolate right into the melters. So we're going to take our one and a half pounds of chocolate into the food processor. 
And the reason we're using a food processor is this chocolate comes pre-tempered. And we'll talk about tempering when we get to, to strawberries. But More science. chocolate to be in good temper has to have a nice shine to it and has to have a good snap. So that's because of the crystal formation that's in the cocoa butter. So if you start with tempered chocolate, you can end up with temp tempered chocolate. So rather than making ganache in a bowl where you'd have a whip and you'd have to stir it, stir it, and stir it, we can pulse this and with the heavy cream melting the chocolate, and that will be the basis of our ganache. Now the okay. flavoring we're using is Gramonier, <clears throat> and this happens to be 0 0.20 pounds of Gramonier, which is about uh, around three ounces for this. <clears throat> and what we've done is we've warmed the Gramonier in the microwave so that when we introduce it, it doesn't cool down the, the, um, the scalded cream too fast. So the cream is ready to go. Ready? All right, so you can set that aside. And I would like to add, don't put that in the microwave for too long because I've seen them catch on fire when uh, owning the restaurant. If someone wants a special coffee, they throw the liquor in the coffee mug in the microwave. Oh, and, yeah, um, yeah. So we're going to pour. It wasn't pretty. Well, it was pretty, actually. Right. But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the right kind of pretty. Now, this is where your, your thermometer, and this is simple thermometer. You can buy it at uh, Vermont Kitchen Supply. Mm -hmm. It's a $10 item. It's digital. And we're going to set it to centigrade. And we are going to... Just make it harder and harder all the time. Well, the nice thing about <laughs> centigrade is it, it, the range of numbers. It's all, in, it's all in decimals. So 100 degrees is boiling. You don't have to worry about 212 and mm -hmm. converting. Right, right. So if you change it to centigrade, we're going to bring this to 80 degrees centigrade. So right now it should be pretty close. And... Is there, I guess when I, when I make ganache and I don't, I've never learned the right way, I feel like if I put my finger in it and it's like my body temperature, it doesn't feel too hot or too cold, mm -hmm. then I feel like we're, we're, you know, getting to the right temperature. But this is hotter than that. Yes, right. And you can kill the heat on that. So we're going to pour about three quarters of the cream into this food processor. The reason why you wait till 80 degrees is you do not want the chocolate to melt and go out of temper very fast, which can happen with the heat. All right. So this is this is the house food processor. So okay, let's see. There you we, go. And this one has a real funky arrangement, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let's keep it on our toes. Pulse this. And then we're gonna oops, we're gonna pour the remaining cream in place and the butter. And the About butter adds butter. more of the solid. And how many That's 0.13, it's about two and a quarter ounces of butter. Okay, two and a quarter ounces, which is a little over four tablespoons of butter. So the reason I, uh, basically what I took was a, a, a larger recipe, you know, six pounds of chocolate, eight pounds of chocolate, and just cut it down to what I felt would work in a, mm -hmm. in a food processor. So now we're going to add the butter. And we're going to finish... So that's very fast. Yep. And if you take a look in there, and I'll take the cover oh, off in a gorgeous. minute. Oh, that's gorgeous. So we're just going to melt out the last of the chocolate. Truffles are awesome because it's chocolate, cream, sugar, alcohol, and butter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would need to eat anything else, honestly. And if we end the show with me having chocolate all over my face, I'm sorry in advance. I should have worn brown lipstick so that you would never know. So this is what the ganache looks like. Great. Now show Mark. Yep. And it's, it's shiny and 
luxurious. Yes. Very yes. luxurious. So while that's cooling down a little bit more, what we're going to do is we're going to make these truffles two ways. We're going to deposit them into 6 egg or confectionery sugar, powdered sugar, and we're also going to roll them in cocoa. So the first thing we're going to do, this is a little less than, uh, at the supermarket you, have, you get them in two pound bags. Mm -hmm. So this is just about two pounds, all right? So we're just going to tamp it down. Nice. This away. And then this is just a little cheese cutter and we're going to make little impressions So it's like a little cup yep. that holds the piped ganache. Right. So you have an automatic little circle. And you don't need a cheese knife. You just need something that resembles that right. handle. Right. And it could be any size. It could, it could be a shape. You can make oh, a ganache yeah. in a little star shape. That would be fun. Because what'll happen is it'll hold the shape. All right, so that's we'll just do a few of these. Okay. So we'll have some that are cocoa dusted and some that are confectioner sugar dusted. Right. right. So these, the ones we're making right now, have Grand Marnier in them, but there's a lot of different ways that you can flavor a truffle. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, it doesn't have to have alcohol. Um, in fact, uh, if you've, one of the first things that I, you know, when you go to a professional candy school and they want to do a ganache, they'll do um, Earl Grey mm -hmm. because Earl Grey is a very strong flavor, very pronounced, very easily recognized. So you could take Earl Grey tea bags and infuse the cream with mm -hmm. the Earl Grey. So you'd steep the Earl Grey. You could even use leaves and then just filter it out or screen it out and then make your ganache yeah. that you way. You could do that with coffee too. You probably. can do it with coffee. And we make a, a, a mocha truffle where we make our own coffee syrup, which is just a, a concentrated coffee and sugar and mm -hmm. water. And uh, so we reduce it to a nice syrup and we also get from one of our supply houses a mocha paste. So a tablespoon of mocha paste with just an intense yeah. uh, coffee flavor. And, um, and when you're doing your calculations on your recipe, you would determine the weight of your mocha paste because it's contributing to the solid. Right. And it would also help for us to know what the moisture content of the mocha paste is. My goodness. I know. It's science. It really is. You just want is. to eat truffles, really. <laughs> right, right. Why, why do all of this? So we're going to do that. And... The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of the parchment paper okay. that we had before. And we're just going to fold it in half and just put it on, ready to be put it on a surface. Ooh. Want me to keep it folded in half? Yeah, folded in half is fine. This is nice parchment. It's thicker than what I use. Like it's a coated. silicone paper that uh, is bloody expensive but worth it. Yeah. Uh, it's got a high release. Okay, that's good. So the, where yeah. the typical parchment paper just doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put this right over here because we're going to work right over here with this. All right. All right? So we're going to take that. We're going to take that and we're going to put it in the pastry bag yeah. and we're going to put it in here. Okay. Now, pastry bags. All right. So if you don't have a pastry bag at home with a pastry tip, a food storage bag, put your ganache right in the food storage bag, seal it up, cut one corner of it out, and pipe your ganache that way. You'll have less control, but you don't have to go out and get the, you know, and incur the expense of getting pastry bag and pastry tips. Because um, once you do that, you'll say, I might as well just go to Mother Myrick's and buy and truffles. buy the truffles, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so we're going to take the, I'm um, going to do this two ways. I'm going to Leave it right on yeah, there. we're gonna leave oh. it right on there. So controlling. I'm sorry. I think I know it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it is an issue. <laughs> girls, it's just girls. 
So we have, we're going to fill that up and we'll do some here and some there, right? Right. And then we're also going to make logs on the parchment paper. Oh, right. So many we'll different ways. And we're going to pipe a little bit. You want to save some to put into here. And we'll for our pipe little, those cups. Yeah. So these are just nice little foil decorator cups that we use. Well, actually, we, we dip our uh, Grand Marnier cherries. Um, we soak uh, cherries in Grand Marnier for a week. Mm. Then we dip them in dark chocolate. And we put, put them in these cups. And that's awesome. So what we're yeah. going to do with these cups is we have a decorator tip here. And we're going to pipe here. And we also have some uh, candied orange peel that we're going to top each of these decorated pieces with. Because Grand Marnier is an orange-scented liqueur. And for Valentine, these are, this is edible glitter that we get from a company called File & Holling in New York. And these happen, this edible glitter is cut into heart shapes. So we can, we can dust them that way, too. So you're bound to get lucky with a heart-shaped <laughs> glitter. So if you want to take some of that out of there now. Okay. Um, there might be some solid pieces of chocolate still left in there, so that might Well, clog that'll make my job easy, trying to squeeze it out of this thing. That's, that's, a, that's like trying to get remoulade out of a squeeze bottle, isn't it, Shandy? Capers, chocolate chips, all the same. Oh, my God. I'm getting it all over my fingers. Darn. What a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to go find the scissor. Whoops. I gotta relax there. All right, I'm gonna take this out of the way. Yeah, we don't need that for that anymore. Okay, so we have our three, and we gotta go back to our places. Places, everyone. Okay, you need to come back around. Okay. This. Okay, thank you. So you're gonna pipe in here. Okay. And I'll pipe in the in the six uh, X or the confectionery sugar. Okay. And um, when you're piping. And Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. Always squeeze from the top. People have a uh, tendency to hold it like this and squeeze from here, but that interrupts the flow. So you want to put all the pressure here, where my right hand is, and just guide it with your left hand. And you want to stop piping before you lift up, right? Yeah. Yep. You can even go a little higher if you want. Okay. Get more of a peak to it. Beautiful. Right. Now, because this is a firm ganache, it's only, as I say, one part water, one part liquid to uh, four parts solid. Um, this will set up very fast and also be edible just that way. It'll hold its shape. So while you're doing that, I'm just going to make a mess over here. Good. All right. We're not really cooking if we don't make a mess. So we do this for size mostly. Can ask so you that. have a consistent volume. Should I tamper this stuff? Uh, no, you don't. Okay. Well, you can if you want to. Actually, we're going to roll oh, we're gonna roll. in there. Okay. Oh, the log, right? Yep. Okay. So maybe I'll put, while it's still soft, I should put this on, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do my little orange, and then I'll do the little hearts. I can't wait to see the hearts. Okay. I'll just do a few of these. So we're just going to let that set up. Okay. And we're going to put more ganache in here. Yep, do some of the hearts. That would be great. Oh. Aren't they I cute? Yeah, I want to put them in my hair. <laughs> Can I bring these on jam cruiser on? Oh, sure. Oh, those are so cute. All sorts pretty. of possibilities with that. <laughs> Like rose petals, but edible. That looks really pretty. All right. 
height. So now you're going to make a log, right? And firm that up and then cut it. Is that what you do? Actually, we're going to firm it up and then we're going to pinch it. We'll pinch pieces off of it. No bathroom jokes. No bathroom humor allowed. I didn't think it. Neither did you. <laughs> sure. All right, so now we're going to seal that up. I'm going to clean this. I think I'm going to open a candy shop. That would be an awesome idea. You got one you want to sell. <laughs> you know, we've been at this 41 years. 41 years. That's 20 years more than I've been at it. And you're still smiling. You're still happily married. We are. Lucky. We're having fun. That is amazing. That's important, right? No matter what you do. Oh, yeah. Make sure you still have fun. All right, well, I'm not going to say what that looks like, Ron. I know. That's all right. <laughs> well, that's because we're not using a pastry bag either. Okay. So it's just kind of just a little <laughs> weird. But we're going to let that set up. Love it. <laughs> Duncan's definitely going to watch this show. <laughs> so in the meantime, what we'll do is while that's setting up, we can dip a few strawberries. Okay. Okay? Now, tempering chocolate using a microwave. We're going to take a pound of chocolate, and a pound of chocolate melted will dip about two pounds of strawberries. Okay. Okay? So we start with... Same chocolate we did for the ganache, all right? And we're going to put this bowl in the microwave. That bowl? That bowl is in going to go microwave. in the microwave. So metal in microwave, taboo, right? Absolutely right, except for stainless steel. Stainless steel does not interact with the, with the microwave action. As long as the bowl does not touch the sides and come in contact with the sides of the, of the microwave oven itself. There won't be any arcing, no sparking, or anything like that. So what we'll do is we take the process's patience, okay? Because what we're trying to do is melt the chocolate without burning it. And we also don't want to melt it so hot that we, all of it is dissolved because we need some of this chocolate. I talked about crystal. Mm -hmm. This crystal, we don't want this to completely disappear. We actually want to melt some of this chocolate into, into the mass that's already warmed so that when we dip the chocolate, dip the strawberry in the chocolate, we get a nice shine. I don't know if we can see that on camera. But good shine to the product, all right? So we're just gonna do a... Didn't get it. Didn't get it. I didn't okay. hear it. You, you go do that, and I'll okay. show you some shine. Some shine. It's a nice sheen to it. It actually is holding itself up. It's not like falling off the strawberry either. I think that's, that's what's really nice about it, too, is that it actually looks like it's encasing, hugging the strawberry like this and not just, you know. That was a good example, too, of the different kinds of truffles. And... Let's get a good shot of my pretty little heart truffles. Mmm, those are pretty. They right, are, wrong. those are beautiful. So we're going to take the chocolate, and this has been in the microwave for about 20 seconds on 40% power. And you can see, because stainless steel holds heat. So the bottom, first of all, the, it'll melt from the bottom or the inside out, because that's how the heat of a microwave works. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do this maybe three or four times to get it to a liquid state. So to make truffles, you need to know science, you need to know math, you need to have patience. <laughs> I'm going to Mother Myra's. <laughs> this is lots of fun though. That's funny, good stuff. And, you know, along the way, I've been cooking for so many years at the restaurant, I've never learned how to temper chocolate. 
I've always known that you have to temper chocolate to get the sheen when you dip things or coat cakes and that kind of thing. But I've never known how, I've never known why. I never knew about beta crystals. Um, so today is a great day for me. Oh, and, great. And I can't wait to try that, you know, melting the melting chocolate the on chocolate my own. Melting the chocolate in the microwave, yeah. yeah. And I've had people that work for me that are like, yeah, I've been told you can put stainless steel in the microwave. And I'm like, you're insane. I'm not letting you do it here. You can do it at home or somewhere else, but you can't do it. But there you go. There we go. And there's... I'm not right all the time. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so I've been, I suffer from the same disease, actually. <laughs> so... So this is just a, a series of just doing this until it's fully melted down, all right? And it doesn't look like it, it, it's, it much is happening, but in reality, the inside of the calais are starting to soften, but the outside is holding its shape. So you'll get to a point where all of a sudden, pow, it just all goes into a liquid state. So what we do is this. Um, once this is liquefied, and we still have some of the remaining Calais available, we will continue with a spatula to melt the Calais into the, in, into the mass. And then when that's done, we'll transfer this to a smaller bowl. So why do we want to transfer it to a smaller bowl? Because if we dip the strawberry in this bowl of chocolate liquefied, what will end up happening is you'll only get maybe a half pound of, chocolate, of strawberries to dip because you'll be, it's too much surface, right, right? okay? So what we do is we would just take it and put it into a smaller bowl, as we did here, and which is now setting up because it's all in good crystal temper. So it's really actually overseeded. So we could put this in the microwave okay. and just simply melt this out and dip the pieces. So we're gonna just cheat a little bit and go right to that stage. So bear with me. Just a few seconds. So this is great chocolate. What if, do you think that like Toll House morsels would work for this? Do you temper Toll House morsels? Because we're talking about the home cook here. Right. And as much as we all would love to have, you know, Calibo chocolate in our cupboard like I do. Um, we all have Toll House morsels in our cupboard, probably, because we make chocolate chip cookies. So is, does it work the same way? It's, it's probably got a lot more stuff in it, right, Ron? Well, actually, the st it has... The fat ratio has changed, okay, because the Toll House cookie wants to um, hold up under high heat. So um, in order to do that, you, ha you can't just have the cocoa butter be the same ratio as it is for the tempered chocolate. Mm -hmm. So otherwise it would just melt out. Although an outrageous chocolate chip cookie would be to introduce oh, yeah. this into it rather than Toll House. When you bite it. Oh yeah, it's, it's right there. That's what we make our chocolate chip cookies with. Oh good, yeah. and so do we. So, so anyway, so go. we've got the chocolate in temper. And then it's a question of dipping the strawberries. I'm going to do it right on this. Okay. Don't make a picture, Ron. I can see it happening already. You're going to put those in a straight line, right? <laughs> <laughs> if this isn't my last show, it probably is now. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Fun stuff. We lost that one. At Valentine's Day, you can go to the store and get long stem strawberries. Right. For about two fifty dollars a piece. Yep. That's true love. They are elegant. Uh, and these are Florida strawberries, so they've, got, they've come up with a lot of white around the mm -hmm. crown. Um, California strawberries tend to be more red, mm -hmm. but they also tend to be bigger. And actually, one would think that, oh, big strawberries? Nah. Yeah. The sugar content is right. You want you good. want a you want a strawberry that's small and has a high sugar content 
and is really adds a lot of sweetness and complements the chocolate. So, and of course, Vermont strawberries in June and July. Oh my God! Are the best. Oh my God! They're just awesome. So, all right. So these will set up, and uh, in the meantime, the ganache is is forming. Okay, and um, we'll take a fork and roll those in. Okay. Move this. Get rid of this. We can move that out. Okay. I'll take that away. Thank you, Ron. Okay. How'd I do? Doing great. So it's a little warmer in here than it is in our kitchen at work. Well, if we did this show last week... It wouldn't have been a problem. Right. <laughs> now that it's a balmy 15 degrees outside, everything's a little different. Right. It's actually like 30 out today, isn't it? I know. It's great. Okay. All right. Now, show us how to pinch that log. Well, I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh. All right. Is this too this warm? Is, it is too warm. All right. So... Um, we can do is I had a little my little offset spatula right here right here thank you yep it's not ready yet but you get the idea we are, we'll take a piece about that big mm -hmm. all right we'll hand roll it and roll it in the cocoa mm -hmm. all right and, and the result we want is this that looks you could do that. It looks like you bought it at, the, at Mother Myrick's. Or... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can do this at home. So um, we could, everybody could come along and... Pinch their own. Pinch their own. And rather than roll it in cocoa or, or confectionery sugar, they can just mm, do it, it like yeah. right out of, like the, right out of the cookie batter bowl. You can also dip it in the tempered chocolate, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, a real cool thing to do with the tempered chocolate is... Uh, yeah, we use, uh, like, we'll take a material like um, uh, drain covers, the little plastic drain covers yeah. to keep the pine needles and leaves out of, your, out of your drain. All right, we'll cut those. They come in like six inch strips. You get them at the hardware store and they come in a roll. So you can roll them out and protect your, your gutters. Oh. All right, so we'll cut those into like pieces of maybe six, eight inches. Mm -hmm. And you can temper it and then roll the truffle and get mm -hmm. a real rough look to it. Oh, neat. Yeah. So it so looks like a, like, a, like it's out of the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very rough, very organic mm -hmm. looking, and that's pretty cool. Nice. So there's lots of things. You're just limited by your imagination and, uh, as to how you want to decorate. Yeah, I'm sure Pinterest has a lot of good ideas. I'm too. sure it does. <laughs> so well, Ron. so that's it. That's, uh, that's the ganache, and, um, and these, the are, these are getting there. But they're not quite there yet. So and the, and the strawberries the, are nice and glossy. Yeah, they are. They're getting their Very gloss pretty. to them. So they're in temper, and the microwave was able to make that happen. Yeah, neat. So it's a lot better than putting it on the stove and getting distracted and burning it. Right. Well, so. the other thing, because a lot of people do it in a double boiler. Mm. All right. And the problem with the double boiler is, uh, you if you forget it, number one. Uh, or the water comes in contact with the bottom of the bowl, it can scald the chocolate, or the water can, the moisture can migrate from the lower bowl up right. into the chocolate. The steam. And that will condenses. cause a tightening of the chocolate. Yes. Seizing. Seizing, right? yes. Well, I think that we've absorbed as much chocolate <laughs> knowledge as we possibly can, and it's time to absorb it here. So, I'm all for that. Thank you so much, Ron. Oh, this, this has been fun. so much fun. Ron, that was so much fun. Playing in chocolate always is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm so lucky I came out without any cocoa and chocolate <laughs> on me. Um, and we learned so much, but apparently there, we didn't answer all the chocolate questions. They're never, you can never answer them all. That's true. It's, it's a mystery. Um, a few questions we had from the studio audience, one being, how many truffles does the recipe that we made on air make? It'll make approximately six dozen truffles. 
So plenty for the evening and the neighbors. <laughs> and if you didn't have the opportunity to give them all away that day, do they freeze well? They do. They freeze very well. What you do is put them in an airtight container. And what you, I would suggest is wrap them in food film first so that you have a vapor barrier inside. Okay. And then seal them and put them in the freezer. They'll be good for probably three months. That's great because moisture is an enemy of chocolate. It is. And flavor migration, odor, odor migration. Right. Bacon. Yes. Yep, bacon truffles. Bacon truffles. <laughs> um, and we used Cabot unsalted butter, correct? Yes, correct. And you highly recommend I using do. that. We use Cabot butter in all of our, butter, we're at whatever calls for butter, especially our butter crunch. Mm, yeah. Oh, God. Next time we're going to learn how to make that. Or maybe Ooh. we'll just eat it. We can do that. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm not going to try to make it. I'm just going to buy it. Um, can you over mix ganache? You can. No? You can, and um, when you overmix it, what happens is it looks like it turns very grainy, and that's because what we call it, it's, it's you're breaking the fat mm -hmm. inside the ganache, and what you have to do is reincorporate it in order to salvage it. So, so you, do you get this add really chocolate. No, or? no, you would just keep working it back, okay. cool it, warm it, cool it, warm it until you get the fat to um, to come back into into a form that'll create a nice smoothness. To okay. the product. And when we melt chocolate, if we don't use it all, we can retemper it, right? We can reuse Chop it. it up and retemper it. Yes, chocolate has no moisture, so it doesn't get moldy or anything like that. So, with whatever you have left over in chocolate, uh, yes, just break it up, melt it down, start all over again. Neat. Was there one more question? Huh? Oh, would you hire me back? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Yay! All right. <laughs> I'm coming back, Ron. Now I'm a pro. You are. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at math. So I just need, you know. A and math time. helps here. Yeah, it yeah, really I does. learned that in culinary school. Yep. Baking percentages. Baking percentages, right. Very important. Oh. Well, I have to say, this was one of my top shows. So much fun, so delicious. You all have to eat your dinner before you get any truffles. You're going to have chicken tagine for dinner tonight. You're going to love it. Of course, it's not going to be as good as the truffles. Um, but, Ron, I opened up a nice 20-year tawny port oh my goodness. for us because that goes so well with chocolate. And, and let's have a little pinch. Look at that ganache. It's ready it's, to roll. Mm, I'm going to roll it between my cheek and gum, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm in for that, too. Mm. Oh, my gosh. And everybody else here in the audience can roll their own truffles. Pinch and roll. Roll on your own. Mm. And I left some truffles in the confectioner's sugar, so you can... It's like being at the Children's Museum. <laughs> <laughs> so, cheers, Ron. Cheers. So much fun. Onward. Mm-hmm. I'll see you in the shop. Oh, delicious. Mm. So thank you so much. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you out there in TV land. We'll see you all next time on Life of a Party.